This is a hop plant. For those of you that like to make beer soap, adding hops to your beer soap adds uh, a really nice exfoliant and just adds another level of that earthy kind of uh, texture and smell to it. So um, obviously we're spring, so there's no hops on it quite yet, but I do have some here that I dried from last year. Um, that you can use as decoration on the top of your soap. You can grind them up and put them in your soap. Um, it just gives you a little more element of self-gathering into the soap that you've made. So they're a vine. We have them on a little bit of a fence here. Uh, I also actually have a hop tree and it's a, it's a little bit different of the hops. Um, I found the smell from these hops is uh, a little bit more earthy than the tree one. So um, we've been talking about plant identification and what you can use in soaps and stuff. Uh, and I just wanted to caution all you foragers out there that aren't aware, um, there's a plant that you don't want to soap with or mistake for anything. And this little plant here, that is poisoned ivy. And a really good way to just stay away from poisoned ivy, poisoned oak, all these wonderful things is a little rhyme called Leaves of Three, Leave It Be. Um, I have severe reactions to poisoned ivy, so uh, positive identification for me is extremely important. That being said, there is a plant that is its natural antidote, and uh, I will take you there next. So poisoned ivy's natural antidote is uh, jewel weed, or uh, some people call it touch me not. Um, they are just in the beginning stages right now. As you can see, they're very, very tiny little shoots. These guys grow to be quite tall. They have a very pretty um, orangey yellow flower that kind of reminds me a little bit about a, of a slipper. Um, when you touch the plants and they have their uh, seeds, the seeds go flying everywhere, thus the name Touch Me Not. Now, jewel weed, um, it's very easy to pull up. It's got a nice shiny uh, stem. The inside is where you want to go. So inside here, you'll see that there's a nice gel. And that, if you get poisoned ivy, that's what you want to rub on it. That's what's going to take the sting away. That's what's going to take the itch away. That's what's going to help dry it up. Uh, jewel weed soap is extremely popular. Uh, pe most people uh, get it because they know it's going to help them with poisoned ivy. Though to be 100% um, on, uh, honest with you, poisoned ivy can also be treated very, very quickly uh, with lye soap, any lye soap. So any of us uh, handmade soap makers, uh, you want to bring some water and a face cloth and some soap and you want to wash the area that has come in contact with poisoned ivy uh, right away. Um, the soap breaks down the oils and it's the oils that cause the itching and the blistering. So if you can get rid of the oils and strip them off, um, you're good to go. Of course, we don't always uh, do it right away or we don't notice right away. And that's where this jewel weed will come in handy. So again, it's, um, it's a, a, an empty stalk almost. It's a hollow stalk. It is, uh, very, very easy to just open up with your finger. And then inside you can see all of the uh, gel and stuff. And these will grow to be as high as uh, your waist, if not higher. Again, they're just, they're just sprouting now, little, little sprouts coming up again. They like uh, uh, damp places, a little bit dark. Um, and 90% of the time, if you find poisoned ivy, you will find jewel weed in a small radius around it. Usually where there's a nasty plant, there's an antidote close by.
So we quoted a cute little rhyme for you, leaves of three, leave it be. Um, and that was in relation to uh, poison ivy. Now, uh, if you remember the poison ivy plant, uh, three leaves and the edges of it were very smooth. If you notice on this plant, the edges are jagged. And this plant is wild strawberry. There's no um, buds on it right now and there's no berries, but this is actually in the middle of my goat field because wild strawberry tends to grow again where the soil is not the greatest. If you look directly underneath here, there's some moss growing. And uh, so we know that that's strawberry, not poisoned ivy. And um, just in case you're interested, I know this really isn't plant identification, but I thought maybe you might want to see it. Okay, so I thought we'd have another quick look at another plant that is great in soaps. Uh, this is chamomile. Uh, this one's Roman chamomile. Um, I just purchased it uh, this spring. Um, right now there's no flowers on it. So there's not really too many identifying properties. Um, some people say that the tops kind of remind them of carrot tops. I suppose that's kind of true. Anyway, um, this also does grow wild. So if you know what you're looking for, you can find this wild. There are some places on the farm here. It's called pineapple chamomile and uh, I use it for a lot of stuff as well. Uh, when the plants come up, I will be sure to show you, but for now, um, so if you look very closely, you can see how someone could, I suppose, uh, say that it was like a carrot top. Uh, chamomile has many fantastic uses, both in soap, out of soap, teas, tinctures, uh, tubs. So many great uses. Um, you can research and see what you like it for. Okay, so uh, wild chamomile um, usually is found where the soil is very poor, um, like where you'll find uh, plantain. Now, interestingly enough, if you look very closely beside this plantain, that is a wild chamomile. Um, they'll eventually grow very, very tiny little flowers, not like uh, the domestics, um, and it's called pineapple chamomile. So this whole area here where the soil is, again, very, very poor, tractor drove over it. There's another one there, and there's another one right there. So they're very small right now, um, but these will eventually all come up, and I will dry and harvest them. Um, and enjoy them in tea and in soap. You can see the little, little, little leaves on them. It's been about um, four or five days since I last showed you my chamomile um, and there wasn't really any distinguishing features because it was still fairly young. Um, I'm just gonna revisit this to show you the buds are actually starting to come out on it. So if you look there, you can see it's a little bud starting to come out. And that's sort of a good indication that you've got the right plant. Of course, that's a domestic one. I planted it, so I know exactly what it is. But you'll get the same kind of buds uh, from the pineapple one, which is the wild variety. So in our video segments, uh, we talked about some plants you can forage for, um, as well as some domestic, domestic plants. Um, I'm going to go through a few more domestic ones that I have. Um, these ones may be harder for you to forage for if you don't know exactly what it is you're looking for. For example, this lemongrass. Uh, it kind of just looks like any other grass, so um, knowing what you've planted which I do because I planted it there, um, 
makes it safe for me to use. Uh, dry it, grind it up, use it in the soap. I use lemongrass in a lot of my fresh smelling soaps and a lot of people like the fresh clean scent that comes from it. Um, I have Lily of the Valley. Uh, they're not in bloom right now so there's no distinguishing features. Um, hopefully when they come out they'll be beautiful and smell nice but um, until that point they, they're just leaves. Uh, I also have patchouli. Um, love it or hate it plant. I guess there's no in between for this one. Um, you can infuse it and use it in your soaps. It's just another little extra product that you've grown yourself that you can add. Um, I also have St. John's wort. Again, another one of those ones that you can add um, just that you've had it. Now, that being said, do not overlook your kitchen spice rack. Uh, you'd be surprised at how many herbs are in there that you can use. Um, I have some sage here. Um, I have some oregano. I have parsley, basil. A really, really good one that is uh, excellent infused and in the shampoo bar that gets posted a lot is uh, rosemary. A uh, hair seems to really like rosemary but it also has a nice earthy smell to it that uh, is really nice uh, infused and pulled out in the soap and being as I just touched that plant that I've that's released some really nice scents into the air from it so um, I've got chives and bay leaf in there, but you probably don't really want to use those in your soap. Anyway, there's not really any plants that you can't have fun with. Uh, if you've done your research and you know they're not harmful to your skin or they're going to cause any um, pain or inflammation, just make sure that you're following your proper labeling procedures depending on which country you're from. And um, happy soaping everyone and I hope that this was an informative video for you.